Thank you very much for coming on a really cold night. <laughs> this year, 50 years of Milton Keynes, the city of trees, right from the beginning of the year, we were thinking about what to do to celebrate this year. And we decided that trees were the thing that we most wanted to celebrate right from the beginning. And um, that we'll get, in, get into that in the... So when we were asked to do this lecture, this talk, sorry, um, we, um, we decided, we'd, right from the start, we'd look back at all our work, see where trees had fitted into other bits of work. And uh, so this goes right back to, our, this, to the very beginning of our, our partnership mm -hmm. together, which um, started in 1968. And which isn't really what we're talking about, but it's why this is here. <laughs> but it we make, thought, makes yeah. it all... Yeah. Um, so we, we've, only, we've, only, we've done lots of other work that doesn't have trees in or which we haven't picked out, or, or but um, we wanted to put us in at uh, as students. We were particularly interested in surrealism and Duchamp and all sorts of things that you'll know about. Uh, but really, um, we've always hated the term photorealist, and it's never suited us, but um, I think if we had to accept a label, it would be narrative painting. So what we've done is we got this, this word from uh, the very first proper exhibition we were on. It wasn't Hampstead railings and things we'd hung things on, but um, so this was at uh, Camden Arts Centre, and it's called The Strong Room. And one thing you should know about it, because it'll come up, is that it's, it's sprayed. Because when Les and I got together and decided to work together as an experiment, for all sorts of reasons, which aren't the point tonight, we had to disguise our handwriting. Because otherwise, what became interesting for other people is who'd done what, you know, who was better at something. And also, it look, look, looked odd when you've yeah. got this kind of brush stroke and that kind of brush stroke, and then yeah. clashing and so on. So we sort of took... Uh, um, Dissect it. We, we reduced it to dots. It's sort of quantalist, if you like. And we used, sprayed five colours, red, yellow, blue, black and white, um, and built up the picture and used stencils. But anyway, this is called The Strong Room. It's and it was in, in the, the, the first public exhibition we took part in, which was called Narrative Art, the Narrative Painting of the 20th Century, which narrative is, is a term that we embrace more than photorealism. Uh, but I want to say one thing before we, before we start is that um, we both grew up with trees. Yeah. Um, Fanula in Mullingarn City, which um, is all trees anyway, but, but there, are, there are really good forests and woods in and around Mullingarn City. And I grew up, my, my, my family were um, uh, evacuees, evacuees from, from London and uh, eventually got a house in a on the edge of St Albans, a new, a new estate. And 50 yards up the road was um, what had been up to that point, very private woodland, um, shooting, and, um, and gamekeepers and stuff like that. But I'd spent, I spent a lot, well, a lot of the time I should have been at school, I spent in that wood. Um, and uh, so that trees have always been, you know, some, it wasn't what got us together, but it was something we've always loved and been involved with. So. Okay, yeah. so, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> Where are the trees? Yeah. There's no tree here. Um, but um, it does explain um, where, we, wh where we started wanting to work together. We were interested in surrealism, in the sense of Magritte kind of surrealism, and we were also interested in everyday real life. Okay, so that's why this picture is here, to get the picture. So we, we'll start the talk now. Um, um, this is called Garden City. It's, um, uh, 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 well, this is begin, um, you can see some of our problems. How do you represent trees by spraying and stencils and disguising brushstroke? Anyway, this is a, um, this, in some ways, this is the, the relation of my, the house I grew up in next to the woods. It wasn't quite like this. <laughs> Any, any um, narrative, um, figurative painter needs to, at some point, have a tree in the background. You can't, like, like, as they had in Renaissance, there were always sort of landscapes in the background. So, so we've ever so, we had to do it from time to time and, and trying to work out how to do it. And it's not always that successful. This, this is from 1971. It's a long time ago. 
Um, so you've got this picture, the, the trees in the background, uh, and, um, and we, we did a number of pictures where we did a, a, a second thought for it. And it was often the second thought was smaller, so this one's about half the size mm -hmm. of the first one. So it's, that's the relationship. Yeah. <laughs> and we would exhibit them together if we could. Um, we're, by this time, we, um, our, we were already using photographs as a source material um, for, for our pictures, and we were, they enabled us to discuss pictures, um, a planned ones we're going to paint. And um, we, by taking photographs, we, off, we got to, to enjoy photographic mistakes. This is an absolute no-no, you know, for things <laughs> Which, um, because there's something surreal about, the, about what you mm. get with, with, with a photographic mistake. So it's that the sort of Magritte surrealism where you say, what about this with this? You know, it's the, the fish and the bicycle and the whatever. But um, it's a bit like that when Liz and I were talking about, you know, what about this with this to make this story? So we, we're telling stories, really, but not, they're not, they're your stories as much as mine. I mean, it's to do with whoever's there. Okay. Not so much to say. Another one. No, no, yeah. another, yeah. another. It takes a while to yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's called um, This was quite large, and uh, <laughs> we were having trouble spraying the paint, and um, we, we used uh, acrylic paint on most of it, and we used um, inks, wonderful coloured inks. It looked terrific when we sprayed the figure because we wanted it much finer and to come out through sort of pen type ones, but ink fades. Yeah, we discovered now, <laughs> it's a ghost yeah. figure. Almost. Now the figure is actually black and white. Yeah. And that's, that was um, in the 60s. Mm -hmm. um, no, 70s, sorry. Mm -hmm. But we, 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 we take pictures all the time and we had a picture of the, the trees in the background and this tree in the front foreground and a hedgerow. So we're bringing them all together. Not surprising, it's called leapfrog. <laughs> Um, I just realised the lights off. Um, mm. Yeah, oh, that's much better. That's better. Okay, so this is this. Is, I'm going to keep telling the size. This is three feet square. It's for one evening, and we need. You just have to put them in. So we. Mm. And this one is one afternoon. We think we, all the time we're getting slightly better at trees. <laughs> And uh, this one is constructed on the idea of a clock, um, whereby the, this, man, this, this man's camera is at 9 o'clock, the crow is at 12 o'clock. The, 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 um, the men have got pointing hands which don't... One's this way and one's this way, I think. Yeah. <laughs> These early pictures, we only have 35 millimeter slides of them, and we're now realizing how poor 35 millimeter was in, t in terms of quality compared mm. with digital yeah. pictures nowadays. So we got pretty good at the grass by now. The tree's still sort the of... The tree's still <laughs> eluding us a bit. Yeah. It? <coughs> so um, The more you look at trees and the more, when you're out, they, they, they take on personalities. At least they do for me. They, trees are always like the wildwood for me. I'm always moly, you know, slightly <laughs> in all of them. But um, this picture is called Country Puppet because it's sometimes seems to us that the trees are dictating how you walk down a place. So this, this figure is being... Ma imagine the trees pulling, pulling on, the, on the line and, and her arm on, on, the, on the post. And the, okay, so that's called Country Puppet. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. Um, in 1977, we went to America, spent a year in America, and we realised we, we were in a motor home all that time. With two children. With two children, we realised we wouldn't be able to paint as we went, so we um, took more care with the photography. And um, these trees washed up on the shore in um, the Olympic Peninsula, Pacific Northwest, a place called La Push. It became a very favourite place, which we keep going back to. There are we'll we'll see them. more of these as we go on. Yeah. So that's Les up there. <laughs> but. Um, uh, if by, we'd always taken photographs as if, you know, as instead of a sketchbook, really, just to record things and remind us and to be able to talk about it. But if you take an awful lot of photographs, 
by dint of you know accident really some of them get to be quite good so we had a, a couple of photographic exhibitions when we were there because it's what we have to show but trees are extraordinary as we come across them especially when they're lit with los angeles smoggy skies so this is hollywood in, this, this is hollywood in 1977 and it's not like this anymore because the sky the, they've cleaned no way, up the, they've cleaned up yeah. the air so the sky is much much so duller much <laughs> This is Los Molinos in California, and the trees are Persimmon. persimmons, not oranges. Also, where we're counting them as trees, I'm not the giant succulents, I'm not sure, but it's, this is also in Hollywood, and the trees are completely dwarfed by the billboards. Um, th this was then also. A, a film music composer lived in that tiny little house in the middle of... Okay, so when we came back um, from, from America, we, um, we were asked to, to make a picture for the Woofton Centre. The wall, were, wall was there, but not much of that rest of the building. And um, we, we made this one from visiting Milton Keynes um, on, on, over a, a series of, uh, of, sta of stays, but all in the winter. And, um, Very much a winter version of yeah. Milton Keynes. Um, but this is just around 1980, I think, they finished this one. Yeah. So, um, and this is, we made it to be part of the building, as you can see, this, so this balcony and the steps, and it's, it's now in the library. Um, but if you can just see what the trees were like when we first yeah, came. <laughs> That's what Milton Keynes' trees were like right. when, at that point. Um, <laughs> The lamp posts seem more interesting at the time. Um, oops, sorry, too, too many. Yeah. Um, this was one we did when we'd actually come to live here, and it turned out suddenly there wasn't a wall to do our next big picture on, and we had to find it. Um, and so we were looking around, meanwhile, with our cameras. And this is a, a I think it's called um, Someday, meaning someday my prints will come, because a lot of it was done the day. The prince came to open the station and said, it'll never last, it's made of glass, as I remember. Yeah. <laughs> but um, these trees, I think this must be Silbury Boulevard. Um, you can't quite tell because we've mixed everything up. Plain trees have actually got leaves on now, so let's, let's move forward. Yeah. Um, when, when, we, when we started doing these big pictures, we, we were at a point when we found the spray painting and cutting out stencils um, was much too laborious and we weren't... It, it was taking far too long to make any paintings, so we used these things to start trying to use brushes again. Which, um, and we sort of adopted somebody else's style. We don't know whose it was, but we used it for quite a while. Um, By that time, we didn't know, really. Yeah. We can't remember who's done what. But it's um, uh, one of the problems with uh, acrylic painting, especially um, uh, noticeable in the big library pictures, is that it doesn't dry. Or they've done something to it now. It doesn't dry the same colour as you put it on. So if you've got half the body on that canvas and another half here trying to match the, the tones, it didn't work. It's quite tedious. But the, so the, you can the, see the, where the joins are and why the, it's Those um, plane trees are in this picture as well. But, but, um, okay. But it's already looking greener. It's a summer picture here. Um, when, when we... When we first came here, we lived in Stacey Hill Farmhouse, and this was our back garden. We were asked to paint the view out the window. So we've got a Liz Lay, um, snowman, was there all summer. Jack Trevor Story's geese, um, everybody's rainbow, but we had an old tree, you know. Lots of old trees, actually. There's a fine tree, isn't it? Yeah. And that's another one. Yeah. From my this room. is um, a small painting, this size. Three, three feet wide. <laughs> is it that big? Yeah. 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 Three by two, I think. So. Now, when you look at trees a lot, when you go around, you, we're going to imagine what it was like for trees. We, so this is called the trees tale, and various inanimate objects. We sort of tried to see, you know, they'd seen an awful lot of life go through and time passed. So we... Um, we imagined what, what tales it could tell. Yeah. So you've got these two girls sharing a secret, and there's a rather seedy-looking guy over there. Isn't it? Um, you can just see him at the bottom. It's not... Um, but the trees have sort of seen it all. <laughs> and you'd love to know. So th this one um, is probably four feet high, and it's called um, Milestones. 
and the trees here are marching his steps, m marking his steps. Mm -hmm. um, and this one is at, the first pic picture has actually no spray in it. Mm -hmm. um, the, the, even though the sky has a grade right from light to dark, I think it was probably produced by using rollers, and the rest is all brush. So mm -hmm. it, um, I keep saying this because it, it, it has a relevance to wh which way we, we approached how to represent trees, which. Mm -hmm. And also, because you can't really tell on this scale or without seeing the real thing, paintings do look like paintings when you see the real thing. And th this one, similarly, this is, this is all brush painted. Um, it's called Master of Activities, and that guy at the end is Patrick Hughes, who was the Master of Activities at weekends in, in Ireland that we used to go to with Angela Flowers. Yeah. So he, he had ran the ping pong tournament and uh, <laughs> any other told everywhere where all the visits were going to be. Mm. And, and it, this one is <laughs> 1990. And um, dur during uh, that, about that time, um, our gallerist, Matthew Flowers, um, who was um, by marriage related to the director of the um, Royal Geographical, Royal Geographical Society, um, who were about to do a, um, a new... Uh, a new expedition to a rainforest, yeah. and they, up until they decided, I think it was the RGS who decided that, um, first of all, you know, historically they used to take painters, then photography came along and they were just thrilled to bits because it's, and I can see why, <laughs> but, but then they decided that um, I think the trouble with um, publicizing everyone's concern about rainforests at the time was everybody was heartily sick of every color supplement and they opened everything was a. A, a beautiful yeah. photograph of a tree or a something else. But um, so our brief was, so they decided they were going to get artists to come along and stay there a long time. And our brief was not to make um, botanical uh, illustrations. They had other people to do that and there are other ways of recording them. But it was to give a feeling of what it was like to be there. And, um, and for us, we'd never been to see anything where uh, we'd never seen something like it before. And that happens quite rarely in your life, that you go to something that you don't know what it'll be like. And at first we thought, God, nobody's going to believe us anyway. We can paint absolutely anything we like. You know, they're all such odd things. But it, you very quickly get a feeling for what's there and, and want to be faithful to it and find out more. So we, we've come to the end, end of the line with brush painting with acrylic paint. It's just so frustrating to use. And so we thought this was going to be an opportunity with the rainforest that we would move to back right to the very beginning to oil paint. Mm -hmm. And um, we uh, decided our pr approach is going to be to take photographs and to um, sit in the forest and, and make sketches, make oil paint sketches. Which is another good reason to use oil paint because water-based paints aren't so good in uh, very wet <laughs> circumstances. <laughs> so this one's a photograph. <laughs> We're going to keep saying this now. And it's easy to tell when you've got the real thing in front of you. But, yeah. Rainforest has, has a wonderful thing for rep representation, representing is that all the leaves are big. So if you want to do a fairly gestural sort of painting, you can, you can do quite a, a big splodge of a brush, mm. brush stroke, and it will, will look like a leaf because all the leaves are the same. It's much more difficult in a, in a British mm. woodland where everything's so tiny. It's the insects that are tiny, some of them. Absolutely minute. Except for the big ones. Except for the big ones, yeah. <laughs> um, this, there's a lot of light coming into that picture. Often they were dark. Um, this is a, a river um, picture. And the rivers, the, the rivers are the, the means of traveling round. And you need somebody to, 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 to work the longboat for you. They're terrifying things, you know. <laughs> uh, and these rivers, uh, this, we, we'll show you a painting later taken to the same area, but this is taken after the event, and the piled up extra stuff is because the, the rivers go very quickly right up high. In, so in the painting, the, the, there are the two logs at the back, yeah. and um, between the, and the, these, these logs on top have just been washed down at some point. Um, you use the rivers, first of all, when they're big enough to get, get to a place in a boat, and then you walk up them before you start trying to climb up, up the hills. Mm. Um, this is in Brunei, by the way, and, and Brunei, this area, which is, because Brunei was so wealthy, it didn't need to exploit its forests, so there was, it did have um, pristine forests at that time. 
Um, in this area, it's very steep, it's so very, it's very a steep. pleasure to go <laughs> in a boat along the places because yeah. otherwise it takes. Very, well, you can't find, you can get lost so easily. Mm. The, the trees have the most amazing buttresses. Um, good, um, rainforest doesn't have a lot of soil. It's um, and it's um, it's roots are very shallow. Um, the, soil, the soil washes away, and it, 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 the uh, the roots are dependent on um, catching things that get washed past them, um, which is well, it, <laughs> And that the odd thing is, of course, that there are fallen leaves and young leaves all the time. There isn't a season in the way that, that we have it. There's just the rain or not rain. Um, but uh, I don't know. They just it's not like Brick Hill Woods because there's so many very different sort of trees than we'd ever seen before. But the buttresses are, and of course, they can be huge. So we're, we're looking at things that are taller than us, at the buttresses. Yeah. So the, the, every tree has got all kinds of stuff growing on it. From, um, and the big question when you're camping out is, or the big discussion when you get back to the base camp with other people is, what, because the biggest danger of dying is something falling on your head, a branch or a tree or something, and you don't get much warning. So no, when it's, you know, I don't know, 30 feet across, from here to there, do you, do you run, do you stay still, or have you got time? So that's, that's the game you play when you're sitting near a painting. Them. And the, the, these buttresses are very, very strong. So if a tree actually rots without falling over in the first place, they're the last thing to be seen. And the, the Eban used the, used the buttresses to at the end of their um, dugout, du yeah, their yeah. boats to, to attach their um, their engines too. Because they're, they're so strong. The, 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 <laughs> these are actually the only sketches that we have left. We, 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 um, for the first month, we just got to know the area and identify places we wanted to go back to, um, to, to paint and to start thinking about pictures we do at home. And uh, we had a fishing umbrella and um, our tripods and we were both um, uh, easels as well as, as holding the camera. So the um, umbrella was protecting the cameras, not, not us. Yes, okay. <laughs> we, we were sitting side by side. We had to sit so. very close together, and we got really irritated with each other because these little tiny insects called stingless bees sort of wander around behind your specks and, and everywhere. And you, it's really hard. <laughs> so we could last for you know quite a few hours there. And um, it's what we did discover is how. Um, the information you can not discover. I think we used to get a lot of complaints about the fact that we use photographs as source material because people said we weren't proper artists because you know real artists go and sit out and do it. But you know, you, in a rainforest, there's be a wonderful shaft of light that'll illuminate something. You can only catch that with the camera. But what you can't see is what's in the dark places with the camera. So if you sit still for you know four or five hours, um, you get to know. You get to know it. The light has moved right round you, what light there is, but it's, it's actually very dark, and it stops looking grey anymore, because it's not a, a big, um, uh, you know, it's not the big mass. That, it's right in front of your face is the other thing. You can't get back at it. So you begin to understand it by, with the sketches, yeah. Now, so these are the same sort of things. They, they were tiny. They had to, we had to be able to, because it was very steep, it was a real struggle getting to these places, so they had to be able to, with corks in between or something, fit in front, you know, face to face. Face, face to face, and, 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 and then fit in, put a them in a rucksack and bring them back down the hill. With all the paint and the tripods and stuff. Um, so, the, the, now, the, this, is, this is a painting. What we did actually was we did sketches and photographs there for all those months and then made paintings in our studio using both as information when we came back. So, this, one, this painting is six feet across. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> Very good question. It, 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 it's called up river. Yeah. And great things about up, about about the rivers is that as you walk up them, is the, it's always both frightening and and uh, intriguing. You want to see what's around the next corner, which Lula, uh, yeah. says that's my second name. Just, Just one, one more corner. corner. <laughs> um, but you, yes. And, what I have to keep saying is you can get lost terribly easily here. <laughs> so it's um, 
Yeah, you sort of need, I need to keep vaguely within, you know, so a few great, corners of each other. A great log dragon at the end, at yeah. just up there at the corner. Th this, this is a, an area of the forest which is, um, has been studied for um, a long time. I imagine at the time it was probably about 50 years. It's known as Peter Ashton's Plot. And Peter Ashton was one of the, the Royal Geographical Society's um, great explorers mm -hmm. at the time, uh, much earlier So this was on. before we'd arrived. So yeah. nothing, the wonderful thing is that nothing was touched here by anybody except, you know, they, they had their own marking system. But um, okay. This one is, um, I can't, how big? It's called Babi, which is yeah, the is. Iban word for pig, but because we were showing it in lots of Muslim countries as we had an exhibition that went round, we were asked to change the name. So I, I can't remember what we called it's it afterwards. Ba Babi yeah. is the Iban name. Yeah, and, mm. and, uh, and it was the Iban who... They're, they're not, well, they're not, they weren't. <laughs> Iban, who are the indigenous people of this area, um, have no, um, no status in, in Brunei. They have decided and, not and to convert to Islam because the, they can't unless, eat pigs. Unless they do convert to, to Islam. And that's the food in the forest, yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. um, <coughs> we've used this um, device. Device, thank you. <laughs> device, and uh, uh, quite a few times in, in our uh, painting history, because we discovered rather accidentally that you get an awful lot more sense of space for the size of the canvas by by putting it on the diagonal. Um, you you, you imply without having to fill in bits that you don't want to do and making the whole picture smaller or much bigger. But for us, this works quite well for us because it's, it, we were always balancing. It was really hard to um, stay, not stay upright, we slipped and slithered. And, um, and when we were sitting next to each other on little sort of camping stools and trying to keep things upright and extend the tripod so it worked, we, we were very aware of that. But, but also meant that you could see lots of different things at the same time. So that they was, this, we thought that suit, this steepness suited this shape a little bit. Shape suited the steepness. Th this was base camp. And those are the, the boats that we travelled in, and you really need somebody really skilled, somebody at the front to find so the rocks and the trees. And so it was quite civilised here. Yeah. Um, with with uh, what do they call those? those we had generators for two hours a day. Oh, it's a Gurkha bridge. The Gurkhas, the, the first one fell down. <laughs> but um, so things rocked very quickly. But that, so you could go from because the the areas we could explore were obviously, you know, you always want to get to the other side of the river somehow. Um, so you, you went up the bank and then crossed it at height. But um, I don't think, Sorry. anyway, that's yeah. And um, the, the One of the places you'd go to and it would take you several days and you'd sleep out was the, the, the highest point. In, and they'd, they shaved it off sometimes, somebody had, so helicopters could land there. Um, so it, it enabled us to um, see see over these wonderful valleys. And it was the most marvellous place when you're camping out there to wake up because the gibbons, each valley has a different troop. And they were, well, they, call, not, they call them orchestras, but they, these whooping sounds, they're just so joyous and they, they, they sing all over the valleys. It's just, it's I really love to hear that again. <laughs> they're, they're, I mean, they're not substantial mountains, only, only about 3,000 feet, but they are very, very steep. Um, so this would be deep in one of the valleys, so it's very dark. And, and it's a painting. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, it's a painting. And, and it's, um, I think this is five feet high, five feet by six feet. Yeah. They feel like quite big paintings to us, so we isn't, but... Mm. They certainly are compared to studio size. This is, um, a, it obviously rained a lot, and this was, um, a lot of bamboo grew up near the rivers because spaces had been cleared, and... Uh, and it rained, and we actually made this painting by raining on it. So we paint a layer and then spray it and paint a layer. So this one is acrylic paint, and the, the people in the studio below us did have to complain about the drips coming through. <laughs> but it's, um, but it, it's, um, it, I think it worked quite well as, as, as rain, which is it's quite hard to. But this is eight feet. It. This is eight feet tall. This one. Mm. So this, I, I don't know. This is about half the height, so it's about four mm. feet high. And this kind of is, is something of an illustration of the, the contrast issues that you have when, when trying to photograph. It's a painting, but we sort of, in this one, we celebrated that contrast. And 
Um, um, sorry about this photograph. It's this. Shiny. It's um, too shiny on the surface. But I, I think it's, it's something what I was saying about everything being very close to you. you can, oh, this is the river, the same boat we call the Enkiang. This is, this is just something of, of the, what it's like. Um, as you, everybody knows that the canopy um, is, is quite dense, so it's quite dark down at the bottom of them. Um, but it means that there's very little undergrowth. You, what you've got is a, a, a group a series of little seedlings getting up to two or three feet high with a, just a couple of leaves on. And they're, they're just waiting for 50 years until one of the trees falls down, giving a space so that light can get through. And then it all grows very fast. There are, there are pioneer plants which grow quickly in this very dense for a while, and then they may allow the diptocarps to come up through it, and eventually they become part of the canopy, and it's all like this again. It'll come up later, but there, there are lots of people studying it, because really, you can't cut down a forest and it won't ever grow the same way again if you cut it all. People are trying it in little spaces to see if they can spread, but there is a, a sequence of things that happen to plants. This is tiny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, it is. But you can see it's paint now. Mm -hmm. About 18, inch, 18 inches across somewhere. Mm. So there's a little series of small ones. The little ones. Um, this one was bought by Christie's, and was, and people were going into Christie's and liking it, saying, "Can you do one for me?" And <laughs> we tried copying. So it. We tried it. And we absolutely could First, not. First, we were outraged that anyone think we could copy it, and then we thought, well, actually, it turns out we all those artists who've done it. Turns out we can't paint it. Turns out we can't do 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 so we did a, a series of just close-ups of um, lianas and now the thing, one wonderful thing about sitting still painting is that, you know, after we've finished irritating each other and settling down and swearing at slipping over, we, we're quiet actually. And what happens is, um, Liz already said the leaves are often quite big and they're nice to paint, but. Sometimes the leaf moves and walks off, and then you realise what you've been yeah, looking at for quite some time. Yeah. Painting for two hours. Yeah. And, yeah. and that happened once when we were painting, and um, uh, an orangutan came onto a little island. We were sitting in a dry riverbed, we thought, with our easels up, painting this rise, which had interesting plants going out of it. And, and then it, it came, and we were completely it came fascinated. From, it came yeah. from way, da way down the river, because you could sort of yeah. see round, and there's, we just saw a commotion, a sort of red thing coming up. And then, it. under its arm, it turned out to be a tiny little red thing. That was, so we were still watching, and suddenly we noticed our um, easels were bobbing around. Because the thing about the rain is it's a bit like flash floods. It hadn't necessarily rained just beside us, but suddenly the river was taking everything away, so we, didn't, we scrambled very fast. It was very quick, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to rescue our equipment. And so often you are walking up rivers like the previous one, sort of clinging on, hoping you don't fall flat on your face. And sometimes these logs get stuck for some time. Mm. Eventually there'll be a water come down fast enough. This, this is right down in, in the bottom of the valley. Um, there are always streams, and this, this, is a low, this is a very low stream. It's only half the picture, this one. Um, and there's, there's so much going on. It, um, so we wanted to make a painting celebrating it. Try and show what it was like to, you know, to be in it. Oops, sorry, yeah. pressed it twice again. No, so it's second. You can see here that, that the riverbed is just gravel. It isn't mud, and it's it's not running very fast most of the time. But um, it does get washed away every time there's a big rainfall. Mm. This this painting's 12 feet long. Mm. Come on. <laughs> This is a fishtail palm. Um, this was actually known as the viewpoint because there'd been a big fall. It's very steep down that way, and it means you can see across. But mostly, you can't see out. <laughs> it's very claustrophobic, especially at night. It's completely black. 
and very, very, very noisy, which is the thing that we couldn't, didn't know how to but inse Insects. So that there's a yeah. one, I don't have a recording I play you, but there's a, there's a wonderful um, cicada. It's called a six o'clock cicada because it sings at six o'clock in the morning, six o'clock in the evening. It sounds like and, a gong. Uh, <laughs> and uh, when, when, if you're there long enough, at some point the, the sky will be so dark that it will sing again and you realise that the trigger for them is, is the change of light. Mm -hmm. and because on, on, the, on the equator, you're, it's a 12-hour day pretty much all, all year round. Um, About three feet? Yeah, no, um, yes, it's three feet high. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is a series of small ones painted very quickly, really right at the end of this series. We've been painting rainforest about four years. Mm -hmm. and, and I suppose enjoying the, the loose, how you could paint these things with loose paint, which doesn't actually translate too well for everything. It just it seemed to suit this subject very well. These are small, they're about two feet high, but most of it. Okay. Ah, yes. <laughs> so there, there, um, at some point, we were on a, on a very steep hill, and um, next to this tree, and uh, we couldn't get it in, a, in, a, in one picture, so we took a picture of the bottom and, the, and the, what's just immediately in front and then looking up at the canopy. And actually that, that way of looking at things became really how we work with photography nowadays, um, whilst not painting them anymore, but the, trying to, thinking of pictures coming in parts and uh, pulling them together. Um, so this, this painting um, is it's eight feet tall. Um, it was bought by a, 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 timber a forester, baron. a timber baron, um, who gave it to Kuching Museum. But he regretted that he'd not kept it for himself, so he approached us and asked us to come and paint his two favourite trees. Now, this is a man who owns... Uh, um, and it, and eight, oh, I don't know if you, if you know, uh, anyone knows about Brunei, but Brunei's got two little fingers sticking into, into, into Borneo um, between um, Malay, uh, what's Sabra mostly Malay, yeah. Sabra and Sar Sarawak. And in between the two fingers is an area called Limbang, which is where Bruneians go to be naughty. It, it's because um, they're not allowed to do anything at home, and so they... Um, the, the, if they want, to, they want to drink... And booze, uh, yeah. I think. And, and, but this is where James Wong's um, forest is, in, is, in, is in Limbang. And w as far as we can make out, he chose the, uh, his, his favourite trees by sending his henchmen out to... With postcards. With a, with a postcard of this picture. Find me something like that. And so then, then he, we, um, we, we, he sent us with one of, one of his workers in, to this place, for a, into the area where these trees were for a couple of weeks. It was just wonderful, actually. We just wandered there um, uh, and, and played with these trees. That the only trouble was that he was such a helpful guy that he, he was trying to make a seat out of neighbouring saplings and things he knew we were going to be sitting painting. But he also cut down lots of the things he we cut, were trying cut. to make. It was great. Everybody has a huge so parang. We, we, and we arrive at the tree and say, oh, look, it's got these nice things at the bottom. That's going to be great. <laughs> and he whopped them down before he could stop them. <laughs> so, but you moved around. So that so but this, it, yeah. this is morning and this one's evening. They're, t they're two different trees, but they're, they're doing the same, same thing. They're eight feet tall, I think. Yeah, yeah. Clean, clinging to the side, side of the So we're still the trying to give you some idea of us, you know, uh, convey some idea of the, the, the size of them. Um, so that the look, because they are at your feet and, you know, bang in front of your face. Meanwhile. So, <laughs> meanwhile, in Brick Hill Woods. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see, if we'd said it was the rainforest with the, with the dead leaves and things, you might have believed us for me. <laughs> So it's sort of back to inventing scenes. You know. There were no people in our rainforest. Were no, no, no. Well, well, there, there were. were, 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 were we also Brick Hill Woods with a view of um, Milton <laughs> Keynes. That's Milton Keynes in the mist. Uh, more trees. This is called the history tree. It's, uh, it's, we've talked about trees telling tales, but other people have been telling their tales on this tree for a long time. 
And we, we painted this for a, 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 an exhibition at the Hon Honiton Festival. Festival. I mean, in ninety six, I think. Yeah. Uh, it's also quite tall. I can't remember. Yes, and this, this, this we put in. This is back to America. We started going to America um, when after our gallery opened a um, gallery in um, Los Angeles. And um, so, so from now on, we'll be bobbing back and forth from America. Um, this is um, Salvation Mountain, and this is mountain, and this is Leonard Knight, who um, landed in a balloon on the far side of the Salton Sea um, in the in the desert, and decided this is where he was going to spread the word of God. Um, um, well, God told him that. That's why he and, and, popped the um, balloon and paint a mountain. Yeah. Um, but we like the tree. But, uh, it was yeah, a very nice place. It also, it, it's, it's an odd place. The Salton Sea, for instance, is the, an attempt to divert the Colorado, and it, it escaped and, right. and landed in one place, and it doesn't get aerated properly. It drowns trees, and you're never quite sure what was here before and how much they changed the ecosystem. So there are, there are no trees around here. The Salton Sea is actually a major wildlife <laughs> centre nowadays. Um, anyway, that tree's now gone. Yeah. We went... And th this is this is Salvation Mountain itself. He was. Um, it's, it's, I know this is just a, a side issue, but this. Yeah, it was. We, we'd heard <coughs> that you were to take him paint. If you visit uh, him, you, you have to take him paint because uh, you can see why. Uh, but we got there and we hadn't managed to find any. We we left it late and hadn't been another town for ages. So we went saying, is the money going to be any good? Because we just couldn't find any paint. He said, thank God, I can't eat paint and I'm starving. <laughs> so, so, <laughs> But um, anyway, it's an extraordinary place. It's, he has since died, and, but it's been taken up by a sort of, what do you call it, outsider art association in America. And they, I, it's never going to be the same again, I think, because it's... But, uh, um, we, we got a very nice um, commission uh, one of our times we went there. Um, somebody From in North London yeah. owns a, a vineyard in the coastal range just above Santa Barbara. Um, on the California coast. To Linda Oaks, this place called. Uh, um, uh, the, uh, we'll show you lots of pictures of it. So uh, we, it was actually too hot for us. We couldn't stand being there. So we went dawn and dusk. I'm afraid the workers had to put up with it. But it was an organic one. And it had a lot of birds and wildlife. So it was just a magical place. It's, it's the San, Sanford Winery, which was the first winery um, they visited in Sideways. Has anyone seen that film? Anyone seen that, that movie? Yeah. Um, okay, you can flash through. Oh, you, you have. No, okay, yeah, yeah. okay. So this is the same place. There's, there is some. It's um, the coastal range has a lot of mist coming in. It catches them. It's good vines. It, um, but it, it produces some of this Spanish moss, which hangs from the trees. The ground is covered so it, in it's much quail. Cool, much cooler around. than further inland. Really. Yeah. Um, Except so they the, can grow Pinot Noir. Yeah. And lovely but trees there. We don't know quite. What they did. Them. They did things like had. Um, uh, in, uh, insect fly papers all along all along the, the vines, which caused brought all, lots of li little birds would come and pick the insects off it, and uh, there, there were wonderful owls in it. It was really very good wildlife area. Quail everywhere on the ground. These aren't big; they're, they're about two two feet in one direction or the other. But you know, uh, in these places, they. they there are trees and the, bi the vineyards, a lot of vineyards around here, fit in very well. I don't think they've taken too many up, actually. Um, another less wet bit, Milkings, this is um, in Arizona. Is it Cottonwood Canyon? Cottonwood Canyon. But, um, this is, uh, no, it's not the Utah. trees just attract Utah. our attention. Is it Utah? Yeah. Well, at yeah. one end. It's, anyway, we can bicker. Sorry, and you, we, actually, we turned down actually, the chairman. An interesting thing, which I just, just occurred to me, this is um, the the um, place that Trump has just decided he's going to, is going to allow um, mineral exploitation. Mm -hmm. It's um, called Grand Escalante Staircase. Grand Staircase Escalante. Mm -hmm. um, and there's more of it, a lot of it are being um, red rocks too. Within the, last few, within the last 10 years, it was, it was declared a, a, a national park, and then Trump is going to... Denationalize it. De anyway, de we... Depark it. Trees right. attract your attention. The, for obvious reasons, they stick up when you see them when there's something else. But also, they've got charm and character. And um, um, I think this one's gone. We can't find it. We since. couldn't find it last time we were there. Yeah. 
Also cottonwood, I think. Now, there's other uses for dead trees. <laughs> this is called a shoe tree. And they're, they're, they're quite common. <laughs> it's it's a, a little folk thing that people do. They, they, somebody comes along, throws his shoes up, and then everybody wants to copy them. Um, they come um, along on spring break, and there's a great crowd of students. They always seem to be on spring break. <laughs> they, um, and they, they leave their shoes. I was quite tempted sometimes. I couldn't reach most of them, but some were in much better condition than mine. I think you could swap. <laughs> We, we, we used it in, in a sort of complex um, collage that we made at one time. Yeah, you just have to see this. This isn't a tree, but I, we liked the sign. We found Can you sign, read it? Art, ask for more. <laughs> and and it, there's quite a lot of references to UFOs in, in, this, in this work. Um, yes, and we the, don't know if this the, is a the, tree. This, it's a this cactus, is part really. of the same um, collage, and mm. yes, yeah, as Nira said. These are, we don't know whether we can't count saguaros as, um, as But we do because they're the tallest things that stick yeah. up around here. And this yeah. is a cristate, is that right? Isn't yes, it? that's right. This yeah. one is cristate saguaro and it's a, a naturally occurring aberration. It, no, there, there, there are no, one in a thousand like this. So this... Yeah. This tree on the left is, is a bristlecone pine. It's also been moved from its original site, and it's the, they, you, they need to be about 11,000 feet up before they grow or survive. Well, and they are those extraordinary trees. They, they can be up to 4,000 years old, and so they'd certainly have a tale to tell. But, um, and they, they, they're very heavily resonated and seem to be able to withstand fire and drought, and they, they and this one probably is dead, but they can look like this and then come to life again when rain comes. They are extraordinary. Um. Yes, nice cigar. Mm -hmm. uh, another, not a shoe tree, but another it's competition <laughs> and a palm tree here. This probably isn't a tree either. It's, um, but it's a favourite plant. Yeah, it's called an ocotillo, and it, it also has this extraordinary desert plant capacity to look like dried sticks until there's rain, and then it will look like this, you know, yeah. in 24 hours. It's it has this very odd formation of looking like a bunch of, of twigs that somebody's just stuck in the ground, you know? and then that somewhere up there is a, is, is a, a large file. There is. A hummingbird. Mm. I can't see it right now. I'm not sure where it is. Oh, yeah, it's up in the middle. Mm. <laughs> Beyond the resolution yeah. of a projector. Mm. Uh, this, is, this is a can tree. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, it made a wonderful sound. It just it rattled and rattled in, and in it the wind. clanked. Um, there are trees here, but we just cut their heads off in this picture. You know, <laughs> we were doing a lot at this time with panoramic cameras. We're always trying to include the space and make, make it seem as big mm. as it is. But the extraordinary thing in these desert places where there are very few plants is people really nurture them and look after their cacti and other things. And they use stones and all sorts of things to make gardens. It's a, it's a real, you know, old cars, metal, anything you find. That, that, that thing we all have is to make a space and make, make something. Um, around it. It's just full of wonderful details. You can see yeah, the little cutouts out. things. Um, let's see. Um, I don't know if you can read the sign. The kiss of the sun in the morning. No, no, kiss, no I'm like, wrong. I'm making it up. The kiss <laughs> of the, the sun for pardon. Yeah. The song of the birds for mirth. Mm -hmm. One is nearer God's heart in a garden than any where else on earth? And they're so unlike English gardens. It's <laughs> Bottles are often feature. So the, this is, the, the, the one th trees can do, they have a wonderful relationship with the sky. They, they collect the light and then you, you begin to have dramas between the, the sky, the clouds, the ground. Mm. And so we're often drawn to take pictures like this one. And uh, in colour this time. <laughs> yeah, this, this is, this, uh, these are the very, only very trees similar. for 100 miles in any direction. And it's, a, it's an oasis, I suppose. There must be some water here. But the road on the left, 
and it's called the extraterrestrial highway, and you go for 100 miles until you get to Tonopah at the other end. And, uh, but it passes an area, a place called Area 51, which is apparently where a lot of people believe the, uh, the military are keeping the aliens. So there are always people trying to get there. So, so halfway along, there, there, there's a, a cafe, um, which is very, very wacky ca cafe. And uh, people park at the cafe and then climb, go, walk off over the mountains until they get arrested and brought back. And, <laughs> and, and, um, it's trying to get into the military area. Um, other places you find trees are outside. This is a, um, uh, a mission house uh, where they've been looked after or not disturbed or not used for firewood, I suppose. Um, we're back to the coast that we saw in our very first American picture from the 70s. And um, for, unashamedly, there's a lot of these. They are just, they, the cliffs corrode. The seas is the Pacific ocean and it batters it occasionally. Um, and the trees fall here and become like bones, really. They're, they're washed by the, the sea. The and, and when the sea's in, you're very wary, because they one of those moving about, which they lift off, is uh, yeah. all the way, you all, can't stop all it. All the way up the coast from, from um, North, Northern California and through Oregon mm. and uh, Washington, we've, we've found these. And, and that sort of volcanic sand. sand. And these that also cut off from the coast are these little sea stacks. They were part of the mainland first, but they, they had their own trees. More? <laughs> oh, there, there are more. More to come, plenty yeah. more. Yeah. It's not there now, but there was a... A sea otter ran out from behind this mm. one, ran into the sea. Um, we mentioned the Salton Sea earlier, and this is just at the edge of the Salton Sea. And I said it was the Colorado that um, a failed attempt to um, divert it. Um, it um, anyway, it made this area called the Salton Sea, which drowned quite a lot of trees. And it's very toxic for fish. Occasionally, you have to scrape them all out because it becomes anaerobic. Because so they used to test um, seaplanes on them at uh, um, the beginning of the Second World War. And they brought barnacles with them from other places. And the barnacles have, have stopped up all the little waterways that run into it. So it's not clear. It's not getting fresh water. But it, it, that, this um, cull of, of the fish happens every year. Mm -hmm. So, so they, there's some, somewhere that the friar managed to make a living. Mm. And it's, it's all sorts of seabirds, pelicans and yeah. so on. Meanwhile, okay, meanwhile again. <laughs> yeah. back in Milton Keynes. <laughs> trees, trees we also tre no longer trees have. Trees it used to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's one of our very favorite places, isn't it? Uh, trees you know, still tree, there? Trees in the middle. See what's happened to the trees in the city center now. I don't know where this this was. This was about ten years ago, I think. Um, well, I don't know how long well, Netscape's been there. Yeah, but I, I would say that's about the time yeah. time scale. And uh, other trees we've known. Yeah. We, we, we um, had this printed for the exhibition we had in the gallery in two thousand five. And um, five years later, is it the next? In two thousand ten, it was like this. And now, of course, you know it's like now. <laughs> Does anybody know that there's, there's a, a plaque on that? It might not be there anymore, but down there with the cows, there's a plaque that's in loving memory of Boyd Evan. We do know what it is. He was a young hairdresser who got Rona over. Yeah. yeah. It gave us a funny <laughs> feeling at first. <laughs> So we're, 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 we're just going to spread out then. Yeah. This, this is um, uh, Cat's Bay. On the, on the on the, in the Black Hills near Black Hereford, Hills yeah. Near, in Herefordshire. Mm. But it's, I love the way trees <laughs> are shaped by the weather. Um, this so is in um, Clee Hill, near Clee Hill in Shropshire. It's near Ludlow, where, um, where, where we go quite a bit. Um, 
and we, this, we had this one printed on metal. Is it the next one? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yes. And we, we put it in a hedge, in the centre, middle of a hedge. When it actually was snowing, by the time we'd taken the photograph, it wasn't. Yeah. That exhibition in Northamptonshire. Yeah. So it was outside for, um, it was I don't know. outside of five years there, and it's been in our garden for another five years. It's now faded quite a bit, the colour, but it's still there. And there are now better ways to print on mm -hmm. metal. These are some more, some more Clee Hill pictures. Um, Summer version. Okay, so this 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 is a tree that we found whilst with a friend um, looking for seps. Looking for seps in Cannock Chase in Staffordshire. This um, is me back to being moly. This this tree with all its claws and nails and uh, overhanging branches and. Witchiness. We've, we've visited it now an awful lot of times. <laughs> but it, 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 it caught her eye when we were looking for the, for the mm. mushrooms. And uh, later, then we've been talking to the col college about um, maybe have an exhibition in their gallery two, 200, it's called now. Um, and we particularly liked about that gallery space is th that um, one wall went up three floors straight through and we, so we, we've all been looking for something that we could put. thought for ages we were going to paint a canyon that went all the way from the bottom of the building right up. Um, but anyway, this came up in, uh, at the right time and uh, that's what we did. we did. We put this bit on the ground floor <coughs> and then you had to go outside, out, out the stairs to see the rest of it. Which had wonderful natural light coming out. Uh, You'll see, it, you'll see it again. <laughs> so okay. so this now we're back to rainforest, but this time in North America. This is a temperate rainforest on the Olympic Peninsula. It's called it the, the Ho Rainforest. Um, and it's, um, it, this is much, didn't seem to have the lovely dry bits that the um, Borneo one did, where you could, you know, thaw out, not thaw out, but dry out and steam. Um, it was, seems to be wet all the time and produces lots of this, I think it's called Spanish moss generically, I don't know what it is specifically, that drips from a lot of the and trees. lots of ferns. Stuff. Lots of ferns. And, and it's very, very green and a bit spooky some of the time. Yeah. Yes, especially with nobody else around. Um, but it's, you have hummingbirds here, which are a big surprise, they suddenly, you know, the ones that fit with this climate. So it, it's, you never quite know where the spooky shapes are coming from. If it's fallen and more moss has grown and then they've added to the, the odd shape. Uh, there's lots of light coming through to here and lots of, you know, un under growing stuff. So. It must be like bits of New Zealand, don't you? Hobbits or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my brother, who's a tree man, trained as a forester, and, um, says this is rather a sick forest, actually. <laughs> but I wouldn't know. Well, there's nothing in the harvest that's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, in the same area, but something that really looks good in so many places, and so are aspens, which uh, there are a lot of, and that's what these are. Um, and um, they're always attracting our attention, either for this density and the way they, they spatter up the light or, or just looking at them. Now, these are also aspens, and I'm just going to point out the scale. That's a figure. Yeah. But because there's so many of them, they're very tall and straight and thin. They're, I mean, I think somebody may have planted them as a crop, but it's, it's now... Until, well, until very recently, there's a big fight about it, whether who can get at it and who's allowed access. 
So we, we've spent quite a bit of time with redwoods, and we feel that we've just somehow failed to get them. It's once, once you try and squeeze them into a camera, and then try and push them out again, they end up looking, you goodness knows what size they are. But, uh, yes, it's just hard to tell. You see, uh, that, that same person, if they were there, would be about here. And we don't want people in it, but without the people in it, you won't have a sense of scale. But it, it's, and so we can go up like this, but it, it, we can't get back from them because there's a tree in the way, so it's, um, it's quite curious. But we keep trying. Yeah. Somebody has done a wonderful picture of a redwood by going up another redwood, a climber, and taking it. They've taken it in, in parts, parts and stitched it back together. All the way up, reducing it in no perspective. In and that is one giant tree. Yeah. They're wonderful to be in, but this is, this is more like what it's like being in them, amongst them, I mean. And in, well, th these are often dry, and th that's another thing that when, when they're dry, they, place, they don't it? reflect light, but they're still mm. red or something. Yes, yes. Mm. These are something that we find all over the place. They're called nursery trees for obvious reasons, you can see. Well, the fallen one is a nursery. Okay. Uh, a tree that's probably a bit too near that house, by the way. <laughs> Um, these are Joshua trees, I'm sure you know, but uh, there's a, it's a big park dedicated to them. It's a particular height that they grow at. Yeah. That's the mistletoe tree. <laughs> uh, it's, it, for us, in pictures, trees are... Well, for us, it's a, just a wonderful contrast with this very... Rather lovely building, but very delicate and but complicated building. Um, trees die, but this is a dead version of that. They're Palo Verdes, and this is in a very dry area. Uh, it's called Box Canyon. It's south. It's further south. It's Sonoran Desert, south of those um, Joshua trees. And you can, oh, you can, there's a figure there. You can see the scale. Yeah. And uh, this is relevant because there are lots of forest fires, on, uh, not the, here, but around the, there. The grass has started growing August. again, but there's no sign of any of the trees in this area. Back in England, <laughs> this, is, this is a tree at Ascot mm -hmm. House near, near Lake Bassett. I was trying, trying to look down and up. The roots aren't quite so a uh, different season. <laughs> And this is a, another house we're spending a bit of time at now, um, looking at the trees and what they're doing in different seasons. It's, called, it's at Stokesy Court in Shropshire. Um, this is a chestnut tree in, in, uh, in leaf. These are the same trees. That's... Later. <laughs> so these are other trees. These these are oak trees which are clinging to a hillside. They're because they're on it, growing on a steep hill, the branches are often either I don't know if they're hanging on or propping themselves up, but touching the ground. I think. Uh, these are uh, Croft. Croft Castle, which is quite near. Um, it's a National Trust place, but these. Uh, when was the Spanish Armada? Anyway, that's when they were planted. They're Spanish chestnuts. They're just gorgeous. I don't think we've done them justice, but in terms of being crinkled and curved and so on, sort of long avenue. Um, every so often we, we find ourselves taking pictures of um, autumn, autumn colour, and um, I think with something we end up finding it's slightly unsatisfactory. They end up looking like pictures of autumn colour. In postcards. And it's a bit like sunsets. You know how wonderful they are when you're there, but the pictures all look the same. When so you're that's there. what the next ones are. So that is a quick run through our not pictures. Yeah. 
There's another beech tree in Suffolk. That's, there's limes at um, Waddesdon, Waddesdon mm. Manor. And back, back to Habersham. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> we have a kind of tripod head which en enables us to take pictures in lots of different parts and knowing that they will fit together perfectly when we, when we come to put them through Photoshop. And this is the first picture that we actually used it with. Isn't it? Okay, this, this is another picture of the um, Canet Chase tree. Mm. Yeah, it's a, it's a different version. It, of course, we have to realise too, it's a long time to realise the tree is in the process of dying. You know, it's dying and living at the same time, as so many trees are. And, and we had it in a sh an exhibition at um, Canary, Canary Wharf. Um, which allowed us these which lovely big walls. Yeah. yeah. So it's about nine metres high there. And that was, that's what began why we've been taking very high resolution pictures because we want you to be able to stand up against it and it not look like a post and still be able to see into it. This is a, a Palo Verde in the box cannon and that's, that's the proper picture. Mm. <laughs> but it, it, this is, that is a coloured picture. We, we have been known to take a lot of the colour out but that's, you know, the, the tree is providing the colour in that we, one. We had our Ocotillo there as well. So, again. Um, uh, this is these are from the Ho rainforest. These, these trees. Here. And so that, 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 the that, that's the picture. Uh, without the without the shine. So. Back in Milton Keynes. So this <laughs> year so we, we've, <laughs> we've been talking about uh, making a a picture which. We'll, we'll go on a specific 10 and a half metre long wall. And we, stuck, we were determined it should be trees in Milton Keynes, but, yeah. and uh, within, the, within, the board, within the borders. And um, we, it's, it, we went to, we've been to Linford Wood, um, Shenley Wood, and um, Hal Park. Hal Park Wood, the Hal Park Wood, and um, found ourselves disappointed that these woods are, have been so caref Coppice, carefully yeah. managed yeah. because it means all the trees don't develop that much character. They're just, they're quite tall, they're quite straight. And uh, so we had to sort of slightly rejig what we thought we might do while, while still trying to find trees, spe trees with specific um, character. We started taking all over kind of compositions to see whether they would work. So the, these, these are along the canal. That, um, and this, ah. is, this is the... Uh, tree Cathedral. The Tree Cathedral. Which we've been interested for a different reason before. We haven't actually done that. Mm -hmm. So th this is a 360 degree picture. as is this one. And um, we were trying to, um, we've been to um, Norwich Cathedral, which I, we understood to be the... Um, the model. The <laughs> model for, for the plan for this, mm. for this um, planting. And um, we were trying to fit... We're going to overlay trying, it, really. Trying to find the place yeah. in, the, in the tree cathedral as well as the cathedral itself. So, and uh, it's not far off, actually. We're still not sure what to do with it. Well, we were going to put the forest inside the cathedral. <laughs> so this is old book. We're still searching for what to do. And one of the, one of the thoughts we might... We, because these are very high resolution, there'd be plenty of opportunity to actually look into the picture. So we thought maybe having ways in, in paths... Lots of paths might to be take way, your eye down. To might do. be a way to do it. This is um, the plantation near, near Willen Lake. And this is a place called Water Spinney, I think. Spinney, 
And this is 360 degrees. And though, it, and this, this is another way, just thinking of an all over composition, you look close, and you'll be able to see blackberries on the, on the plants at the bottom. Um, but this one can repeat and repeat and repeat. So imagine this on a long corridor. You get megalomaniac, this is going right down yeah, a very yeah, long yeah. corridor we don't have here. <laughs> so we, we then asked uh, Brian Salter and the Parks Trust, you know, about trees they knew about that we hadn't found. And uh, this, I think, Brian said, was the, the, the oldest tree in Milton Keynes. And it's an ash by Willow Lake. Mm. But it's, been, it's, it's seen better times, I'm afraid. For our uses, won't, won't, anyway. Yeah. won't work for us. It's also too upright. Mm. And th this is an oak on the edge of Shenley Wood, mm. which, um, again, for our purposes, we can't get to the trunk because it's got so much growth around the bottom. Mm. But it's still a nice tree. And that's another view of the same one from the side. This is an oak tree in Simpson. And this one is in um, Oak, uh, Oak Hill Woods. Um, which is, strictly speaking, I don't know if it's in Milton Keynes or not, it's the other side of the, the North Bucks Way. But at the moment, this is our favourite um, tree for, for our... For our, our candidate. Anyway. Our ca favourite candidate, because it spreads out. And it's, but it's, it's a very strange format, actually, for a, for a lime tree. Mm. It's um, Great Linford. Great Linford. So uh, we've taken a, a, a huge number of pictures of this. This is the view from the other side. Yeah. And this was it on Sunday. <laughs> and, um, and we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Stuart who came in pushed us out of the snow. We got stuck in Great Linford after having driven back from Bristol safely that day. We, <laughs> we went straight to here and got stuck. So there we are. That's Boyd and Evans. No, trees and Boyd and Evans. That's, uh...